Well, and this time we are watching the Xbox Games Showcase Extended with uh, my lovely community here on the live channel. And we already know, well, not really what is coming exactly, but we already know who will be here. And, well, let's go through the list and let's talk about it. We have the 343 Industries being there. What could they talk about? Definitely not Halo. I mean, they have talked about that so much already. Must be something else. No, it will be, of course, more Halo Infinite. Maybe some single player? Now that they have already showcased multiplayer quite a bit? I mean, I'm, I'm fine with more multiplayer. Like, mm, you, you know me? I actually enjoyed the multiplayer. Uh, then we have Double Fine. Well, they're only working on Psychonauts right now, and as far as we know, it's all hands on deck, so... Yeah. Yeah. Now, Obsidian would be there. Before everybody is getting a heart attack, I am 99% sure that Obsidian will only showcase um, Grounded, because that's the game which they can showcase without didn't even got a trailer nor mentioned at the E3 and uh, the Outer Worlds 2 mentioned but they literally said dude we have nothing besides of the title and yeah so Obsidian will only be there for you know Grounded which I really have to check out again I haven't, I haven't checked out Grounded at all and by the way, if you're wondering what the music is in the background, that's on me, that's Xbox. We have still five minutes left till we can watch that. Then we have Playground Games. No, they will not talk about Fable. Forget it. It will be all about Fossa. La Fossa. Vroom, vroom. Mm -hmm. Oh, the vroom, vroom. Then we have Rare. Um, as far as we know, the newest game got rebooted. Uh, what was it called? Everwild? Yeah, that apparently got completely rebooted. And I'm pretty sure they would just talk about the Sea of Thieves event, which is around the corner. Which makes sense. And then last, but not least, we have... World's Edge. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. And I will be honest. I'm not really... I'm not really sure. Um, oh, World's Edge is... Yeah, of course. Oh, they rebranded this. I, I remember. I was like, what was World's Edge? But now it clicked with me again. World's Edge is Age of Empires. They 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 needed a studio. They can put this under uh, under the umbrella of Xbox, and they needed one for all the for all the Age of Empires stuff. So World's Edge is Age of Empires. Yeah, they will probably talk more about Age of Empires Four, which I'm looking forward to. And then they are also saying, plus our talent developer partners. Yeah, no clue if uh, what that is and who that is. Maybe Zubu with Plague Tale. Oh, be neat. Or maybe Microsoft Flight Simulator coming to Xbox Series X. I mean, that's also not developed by Microsoft by but by a Zubu. So. Maybe that's right. We have to see. We have to see. But that should be interesting. I'm curious to see what they have to showcase here. Now, uh, let me just do this very quickly because I think. Okay, there we go. Let me also put that on. Like, I will be honest, I will just let myself get surprised, see what they have to offer, and then just roll with it. 
How much do I drink on a daily basis? Um, at least three, three liter, sometimes even more, especially when it is that warm. But yeah, three liter is easily. Like hydrating is not a problem for me. I'm actually drinking uh, quite a bit. Uh, I'm a pretty good drinker. But most, I would say on a normal day, two and a half bottles. Yep, two and a half bottles. I'm getting, uh, getting drunk on my end. Sometimes a bit less, sometimes a bit more, but definitely two bottles. And most of the time on an average day, two and a half bottles. Huh? So hydration is thankfully not a problem in my life. Never was. Speaking of which, I should probably grab something new to drink here because this will not last long. Yeah. We will see. Maybe I will just jump out for a second when we are talking about, I don't know, a game I don't care too much. Even though I have to say, most of the Xbox games I'm actually really curious about. Besides of Sea of Thieves, I said it yesterday uh, when Jess Gordon was actually asking on Twitter like if people would love to see a PvE mode in Sea of Thieves. And... I was saying that, yes, I would love a PvE mode because PvP is the reason I just stopped playing the game. I think that Sea of Thieves is an amazing game, but the forced PvP is what annoys the hell out of me. It's this, dude, this game is so fantastic, I would love to sail around just for fun, having a good time, and not having to think about being murdered by other players, by bigger ships. Like every time I see another ship on the horizon, I'm getting basically panic attacks because I know that most of the people are hunting other players. And when they first introduced Sea of Thieves, it was more like this, hey, PvP happens when it happens. And then it became more and more like, yeah, PvP is everywhere. I was like, uh. I think this is the the uh, the wrap up they did for the E3. Oh, well. All right, Let's see what they have to show. They had some really good games, man. Bring me that horizon. If we can Oh, spooders, all the spooders. Lens flares. <laughs> oh, maybe they're showing off a little bit more Back for Blood and Far Cry. Oh, maybe some Battlefield? Nah, I don't think so. <gasps> Actually looking forward to it. Man, they had so many good games. Just seeing this again reminds me how many good games they had. Yeah, this game I have to see something about it. I I don't really have any conception about what Redfall is. So my hype for Redfall is mm, pretty low. Unfortunately, I hope they change that. Like when we get the first gameplay and I know actually what the game is about, I might be more interested. Hello and welcome to Xbox Game Showcase Extended. Hey, Paris. Paris Lily, 
You may also know me from Gamertag Radio and kind of funny. I'm excited to be here with you. And today. Twitter. We just saw a Lots recap of, Twitter. of Sunday's Xbox showcase and wow, 30 games from some of the world's most talented developers and 27 of those games are coming to you on Xbox Game Pass. We saw the Neat. first in-engine footage of Starfield and learned that yes, Bethesda is bringing it to Xbox, PC and day one on Game Pass exclusively. They also showed us Battlefield 2042, Sea of Thieves, A Pirate's Life, Stalker 2, Psychonauts 2, and how about Redfall? Like they Meh. said, this year, Xbox is all about the games. Today, Xbox Game Showcase Extended is our chance to hear from the developers behind the games that are redefining interactive entertainment. Developers like Double Fine, Playground Games, Supergiant, Rare, Ooh. 343 hey, this Industries, is and more. We also have a new assessor. Got so many people will be so pissed. Other cool surprises. That's enough talk. Let's jump right in. Uh, when they don't get Hades too, because Supergiant Games likes to jump into a new game every time and try something completely new. People will be so pissed when it's you not be Hades too. You can see for Forza Horizon Five looks phenomenal. And here with us today, all the way from the UK, is Mike Brown from Playground Games. Mike, thanks so much for joining us. Hey, great to be here. Now, Mike, Forza Horizon has taken driving fans to Colorado, France, Italy, Australia, and the UK. How did you decide Still waiting for Japan. Forza Horizon 5? Yeah, so we knew right from the start that we wanted and it to John, be the largest Thank you very much for the follow yet. again? Um, but it's not the third time? far down the path from that that you realize you don't want to go <laughs> big if it's just going to be more of the same. So we also knew that it needs to be I've the most the first contrasting, time. most diverse open world we'd ever built. And then when you start to look at Mexico, it, it really is like the whole world in one country. It's got snowy peaks, tropical jungles, epic canyons, amazing beaches, beautiful architecture, incredible historic cities, but also modern cities as well. It really has everything. And then you add in the culture, the music, the artwork, the people, the history. And there really is no more exciting location for the Horizon Festival. Now that we're in Mexico, what are some of the authentic elements that we can expect in the game? Yeah, totally. So we've got the largest and most diverse world we've ever built. Wait. And as I mentioned just a moment ago, something that really excited us about... What's the car just named? The Tedious so Gaffer? we've worked with creatives from all across Mexico. Damn it, Gaffer! We've had Mexican artists produce beautiful mural artwork <laughs> that you'll find on the walls around the game. We've worked with Mexican music acts to produce original compositions for the game. We've oh, that's Mexican cool. Mexican scriptwriters and actors so that all of those Mexican voices you hear in the game will sound really authentic. Because and they are from Mexico. That's obvious. Uh, but the other thing that is super authentic is uh, all of our light data and skies. So we had a team out in Mexico uh, with our 12K HDR sky capture rig. We captured more than 400 hours of sky data. And then we recreate that in-game. Um, so all of the, the light, the shadows, the color information. Hey, Han. Is in -game I'm off to Mexico. Light data captured from what are you doing in Mexico? So everything you're seeing uh, is just has that real Capturing that, the that, sky that for of hundreds of hours? And we got a peek at Event Lab. Now, what can you tell us about that? Drugs? Yeah, so are you, are you smuggling drugs? A, a really no, I swear, it's the sky data. That will allow people in the community uh, to can you not just say it's drugs? Imagine, really. Wait, we look at the video That's right easier now. to explain All to my friends. Has been built, uh, using that <laughs> event lab tool set. Uh, the bowling pins this is actually like, something I'm hyped for. Having like a track well, mania so style thingy them. going uh, on here? Has been set up oh, hell so yeah. Gives gives players points and then also in that in that clip you can see that everyone else in that multiplayer session is hitting bowling pins as well and all of that is adding into a collective team score uh, the rules could have easily been set up so that it wasn't a team score that it was competitive all of that creative freedom is is, is open to players it's as, as a game designer i think it's the feature that i'm most excited about in in forza horizon 5. And I would say, as a gamer, it's a feature I'm definitely excited about because this really is going to open up. Some it it sounds cool. My friends. Now, with the power of the Xbox Series X and the S, what are some of the new technical features that we can expect? Mm. So in, in Forza Vista, we're really able to turn up everything, ramp everything on, turn on ray tracing, and we have the cars Ooh. looking more realistic than they ever have before. Unparalleled detail. 
But that detail, it does apply to the rest of the world as well. During the uh, Xbox E3 showcase the other day, this I met car is so ridiculous. And, everything, right down to the and yes, it's a real car. The cactus. Uh, that was just the plants that happened to be closest to the camera at that point. Um, that, that level of detail is applied to everything that you see. And thanks to the power of the Xbox Series consoles, it's not just things that are right in front of the camera as well. We've really been able to push out all of the, the LODs and the draw distance and everything so that everything in the scene is full of that detail. And then, as I mentioned earlier, we capture that light data from Mexico. So you get this realistic lighting, shadows, AO, all of it comes together to create a scene that just looks real. Now, Mike, okay. when can the world expect to play Forza Horizon 5? But we already know that. So we're launching this holiday on the Xbox Series consoles, the Xbox One consoles. We're on PC, on both the Windows 10 Store and Steam. Of course, we're in Game Pass and Game Pass Ultimate. And you can play us on your Android device with Xbox Cloud Gaming. Yep. And players who purchase the premium edition or if they're a Game Pass subscriber and get the premium add-ons bundle, you'll get early access as well. So you'll be able to play a little bit earlier than everybody else. Yay. Now, Mike, this was a huge moment for you and the team. What does this mean to you? Yeah, well, for me personally, I mean, I've been working on the Forza franchise for a really, really long time, but this is my, this is my first game as creative director. So in this period over the last few days and, and week or so, as people are seeing it for the first time, for me, it's probably been one of the most exciting experiences in my life. It's been absolutely incredible. Again, Mike, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure. He didn't Later read the, the script, show, by the way. We'll be hearing from the developers behind games like Age of Empires 4, <laughs> Shredders, and Grounded. Cool. But first... The team at Ninja Theory. At least not the last part. With you. Here's to me, Chief Creative Ninja, to explain <gasps> what they've been hard at work on for Hellblade 2. Oh my, that game didn't was Hello, mentioned at all. Well, brand spanking new Ninja House in Cambridge. I wanted to give you an update on the work so far for Senua Saga Hellblade 2. Classic. What we're doing right now is building a good chunky slice of the game before we then move into full production to build out the rest. Hellblade oh, was very special for us. It's not even in full we production didn't want to do a yet. Straight sequel. We wanted to do something Whoa. extra special. And so we're making our lives as difficult as possible in that pursuit. The game is set in Iceland, 9th century Iceland. So we've been sending our art and audio teams out there, doing photography, photogrammetry, and combining it with satellite data to recreate large swathes of the landscape. Oh God, will it be an open On world the game? Front, we're building real costumes. Scanning them not. in. We're collaborating with Epic Games to bring you next generation digital characters. On the combat front, we want it to be extra real and brutal. And so Melina, our main actress, has been training for two years, and all of our animators have undergone combat training. And so what you're gonna see We are here building is not an army here for a gameplay reveal, but rather a montage of the kind of work we've been up to. I hope you like it. Okay. I didn't expect anything at all, so, you know. Yeah, it seems like they are really doing like a vast land. Follow me. Ooh. On this journey. By sea. And dreams. Okay. Over the mountains of rage, to the depth of fear in my mind, you might see me as. I wonder how Senua actually came to Iceland. But I will show you what lies behind my eyes. With our swords. We will forge new stories to strike the gods that haunt us. We will embrace our suffering. Ow! Soon our scars of grief and break their siege of our minds. They may see them as gods. Alright. Ari our fiatly in this Nyota. 
And a big coke. Oh! It's advertisement time. Time to drink something. I like the idea that you can just produce your own controller. They really have to work better together with Xbox Pope. Oh. And that is Xbox Design Lab. And here to tell us more about Xbox Design Lab is Naveen Kumar. They're really making this a long segment. Uh, folks, I would take something super quick new to drink because this is empty. Uh, I will be back in a minute. Where you can choose have fun with this television advertisement show. Really make it yours. Uh -huh. uh, you can design a controller based off your favorite video game character, your favorite sports team, or whatever inspires you. And you can think of Design Lab as your own personal design studio. Now, we've originally launched Design Lab uh, five years ago and have since sold millions of controllers to fans around the world. But then we had to take a pause as we brought up our latest generation of Xbox hardware. But now we're back offering customization on the latest generation Xbox wireless controller. Now, we have so many awesome controllers here right now. Can you kind of talk a little bit about them? Yeah, well, right off the bat, you can see there's tons of color options to choose from. For most of the parts on the controller, uh, you can choose among 18 different colors for all the different, different pieces on the exterior. Uh, three of those colors are brand new to Design Lab. We have Shock Blue, Pulse Red, and my personal favorite, the Electric Volt color. Most of the colors uh, include post-consumer recycled resins in them. So there's a, a portion of, of things that are ground up, like automotive headlights, uh, recycled water bottle jugs, uh, things that make the controller more eco-friendly. We also have new button options for the ABXY button set and the view menu share, including a really cool button option uh, for ABXY that's a throwback to the original Xbox 360 controller. So you gotta check that out. And um, yeah, this is just the beginning. We're excited to, to introduce more customization options over time. Now, two of these controllers were inspired by games. Can you talk about that? Yeah, so there's a, a blue and green and purple one that's inspired by Psychonauts 2. We just love the key art for that one, so we work with our partners uh, to develop a controller to help bring that to life. And there's also one that's inspired uh, by Grounded and the aphid character from that game. Uh, we had a lot of fun in designing that as well, as the controller kind of looks like an aphid if you look at it yeah. uh, from the right angles. Now, I created my own controller. <clears throat> I'm going to pick it up now. I'm a huge Los Angeles Lakers fan world champion Los Angeles <laughs> Lakers, and my design was inspired by that. So I went with the yellow on the front, I went with the purple on the back, um, I designed the buttons kind of with the black accent along with the, uh, the shoulders and, and the triggers. Um, but I also did an inscription on it, and my inscription says, Ka can't cook. And that is inspired by my good friend, Khalif Adams. He does a fantastic show called Spawn on Me, but he's a terrible cook. So I want to make sure that every time I pick up a controller to play on Xbox, I'm reminded how terrible of a cook he is and to avoid it at all costs. But enough of terrible cooking. Let's talk about something that you designed. Yeah, I designed this controller right in front of me here. Uh, again, on my favorite color, this electric volt. I just love the way uh, that the midnight blue accents pop against it the dark ABXY colors. Uh, and this one's inspired by a pair of sneakers I have at home. So I had to make a controller based off yeah, that. That's awesome. Now, one last thing. When can fans expect to start designing their own Xbox controllers? Holy shit, they're still Xbox. going at it? Xbox Design Lab. There's tons have of you already bought a controller for yourself, chat? Customization's really fun. And we're shipping controllers to US, Canada, and most Western European countries. And uh, these make great gifts, whether it's for yourself or that special gamer in your life. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Naveen, thank you so much for being but here. But what is Thanks about my dog? Later in the show, World's Edge will give us a deeper look at Age of Empires 4. But first, Tim nope. Schaefer is giving us a closer look at Psychonauts 2. Oh, that's unfortunate. Hi, Hi Tim! Tim Schaefer from Double Fine Productions here today to take a deeper look into Psychonauts 2. 
Second Notes 2 is an action adventure game starring Rasputin Aquato, a powerful young psychic, also a trained acrobat, who ran away from his circus home to join the Second Notes. Gameplay! And expand and explore his psychic abilities. One of Raz's most important well, psychic abilities no, really. is that of astral projection, which allows him to project also, his psyche into someone else's mind. And what is that house Tim Schafer is living in? He can help them wrestle with their inner demons and fight their actual nightmares. Oh my which god! Which means that the levels in the game are actually brains. I mean, and I'm not surprised, more but... Brains than the first game. One of the first brains you'll get to visit is that of Caligosto Lobato. Now, Dr. Lobato was actually a villain in the first game, but after Raz fought him, they kind of became friends. He actually has a piece of information that Raz wants. It is very Tim. Look at this room. Zanato. And Dr. Lobato wants to tell you, but he can't because of something going on deep in his unconscious mind. So Raz has to travel along with Sasha and Mia and Coach Oleander into his mind and try to extract that information. And there's a lot of forces at work inside Lobato's mind, maybe put there by someone else, who are trying to stop you. Including some of uh, the enemies that you might recognize from the first Psychonauts game, including the sensors. And this is so much Tim Schafer. Like, if, if somebody would have asked me here, if this is what you expect from him, yes. Doubts and regrets. Yes. Lobato's mind is plagued with doubts and regrets, and they're very dangerous for Raz. Did I mention there's a lot of teeth? Have I mentioned there's a lot of teeth? There's a lot of teeth. He's an amateur dentist. He doesn't know a lot about teeth, but he really, really likes them. Luckily, to fight all these enemies, Raz will have his psychic powers, including his powerful this psychic looks punch. So his crazy. Psychic repeat from his body into a powerful melee combo. He also has. I've not played the first one. He can shoot a powerful energy beam out of his brain. Raz also has the ability of pyrokinesis. It's always handy to be able to burn things with your mind. And levitation. Raz can use his own thoughts, his own. Is that an animal outside of the window? Or ride around on to get somewhere really quickly. On the left window? So new powers, is there like a thing? All these new enemies and hopefully no, it's just leaves. Oh my god, I'm Truman's seeing shit. Now, while Truman's been kidnapped, the person running the Psychonauts is Hollis Forsyth, the second head of the Psychonauts. Hollis is also the head of the intern program, which is what Raz has joined now that he's become part of the Psychonauts. And he is invited into Hollis's brain for instruction. Hollis is teaching him a new psychic ability called mental. And not just a bird, it looked like there was something behind the glass. Them, sometimes creating new thoughts, making new things happen. While Raz is training a mental connection inside of Hollis's That was just leaves. He experiments a little too far and accidentally, maybe slightly on purpose, creates a lot of interesting gambling inside of Hollis's mind because he wants to go on the mission to the Lady Lactopus Casino. Unfortunately, this connection leads to more connections, and eventually the whole thing gets out of Raz's control, and Hollis gets way too interested in gambling. And uh, Raz has <laughs> to go back into her mind, where he finds out that her memories of medical school, and where she studied neurology, have been corrupted by this gambling interest, and it becomes a casino hospital. And Raz has oh, to a lady of restraint. go in there and engage with all these gambling machines in order to shut it down and return Hollis's mind back to normal. And she, that's she's cool gonna be, she's gonna be really mad inside Hollis's mind you'll see bigger tougher sensors that have turned into bouncers inside the casino and also a new enemy called a bad idea with bad ideas uh, spawn actual nasty looking light bulbs over their head that become dangerous crispy casuals thank you so much for the raid now, headquarters welcome in Raiders to this most exciting to Raz is that he gets to visit the headquarters of the psychonauts themselves which is called the Mother I really have to make a shout out center for all psychonauts Damn it. activity and Raz gets to see his old friend Sasha and Mia who were counselors welcome Raiders in the first game. He to the Xbox to showcase he gets to see their offices he gets to see their labs he gets to see their co-workers other agents in the field but also he gets to see the admin and maintenance staff as they welcome go in their business and hang out in the cafeteria and sort of the everyday this is the Xbox of, uh, deep dive what, showcase in the live world. There are a lot of little hidden so we are watching a lot of like the base that he can find, Xbox exclusives quests and, and this is Psychonauts too. You might recognize from the first game. There's a lot of characters to meet, a lot of fun things to discover, a lot of secrets about the Psychonauts themselves and the lore of the founding of the Psychonauts. I still can't get over his house, man. We were seen on stumps around the campfire in the first game, but now we get to go much yes, deeper please. into the story of how Folks, they Folks, thank you very much, Sekra. It's a real shout out. Together and recruited by Ford Make sure you're following Chris Big Casual. This amazing international uh, espionage force. Mm, One of the things that was so crispy. important about the first game was exploring this natural environment around the summer camp, all the little hidden paths and caves. Oh. Oh, uh, and so in the second well, game we've explored I have that unfortunately clicked on that link. Ah! I'm a professional. I have clicked on that link. I was like, what am I doing? I'm so sorry. 
modifies and changes like I'm such a professional I didn't even want to click on that quarry, lots of abandoned mines and caves and things to explore and next door to the quarry <laughs> is an abandoned roadside attraction called the questionable area a sort of power of yeah of folks I'm a professional don't do this at home by the titanium deposits <laughs> in the area water flows uphill animals behave strangely there's caves dedicated to the mystery of the Sasquatch which is a giant one eyed being that might have existed and might not have also say hi to YouTube we are recalling this for YouTube as well this is why I'm a little bit more focused than usual of his new second -house friends his family and thank you very much for the follow in the circus. Phoenix it turns out some of his family members appreciate that as well. have a little bit of psychic power themselves and they'll be exploring that in second house too and you'll get to find out who put this curse on Raz's family to die in water the Quados have been wow. cursed by a mysterious character to all die in water, and this manifests itself in the uh, form of the hand of Galicia, He's talking a lot about like the story also. Water, which is really just I, I, I rather so feel it's a bit so spoilery. Because of the curse put on his family, that every time he comes near water, this creepy hand comes out and tries to grab him and pull him under, which is all happening inside of Raz's head. Oh wow! In second two, you'll get to find out who put this curse on Raz's family where it came from and what he can do yeah it feels a bit like he's talking a little bit too much about the things you would see in the game story wise crispy what have you played today are actually um more intertwined i'm curious so there's a lot of mystery to discover for the player and raz and his family and his friends as they this looks so the freaky man the and the psychonauts and what it all has to do with maligula maligula is a one of the first villains the second ever fought. She's a powerful psychic and she's a mass murderer. And she's oh my. Been believed to be dead for many years. But there's a lot of unknown things going on behind the scenes and a lot of mysteries and a lot of uh, plots for the player to uncover in Psychonauts 2. I'm actually so kind of curious to check this game out. A look into Psychonauts 2 with me. The game is coming out August 25th. And you can pre order now. So I'll stop talking so you can go and do that. Thanks for watching. Yeah, do that. Oh, Smash Brothers? Wait, is the, the new fighter is not in yet, right? Uh, what's his name? The Tekken fighter. Oh, Minecraft? Hello? Were you planning up a That's Minecraft? Leo. I have seen this game before. And... <sighs> it... I especially the animation of the enemies fell unrefined. Yeah, I always forget his name. Heavy, really? We call them tanks. I call them brutes. From Latin Brutus. We'd sound smart calling them Brutus. He does. Leon, you don't want to get in and here you and wanted to murder Kirby. No, That's Brute. unforgettable. And we cannot allow that. Kirby is love. Kirby's yeah, life. Brutus is looking like a game I didn't realize I needed in my life. And here, I'm still not sure if I really need this game in my life. Like, it looks kind of jank. Thank you for being here. Oh, thanks for having me. Now, Talk to me about this game, the Anacrusis. What's the concept? How, how did you come up with Do we this? already know when um, the new Wait, character for Smash is coming out? I love that stuff, right? Logan's Run, yes. uh, you know, Battlestar Galactica Space 1999. That wasn't cheesy to me or campy. That was just the way sci-fi yeah. was. And so we wanted to set a game in that world. Right? We have those cool colors, cool shapes. I hope they are showing a little bit more about the game because, as I said, this game didn't really click with me, which is unfortunate. Sure, there's aliens. Sure, you're fighting them. Sure, you're trying to save Earth. But you're doing it in a positive, uplifting way. Yeah, I'm just, after the pandemic, I don't think I could go back to a dreary, post-apocalyptic world. Murdering aliens. Uplifting. Yay. Now, talk to me about the gameplay. You, you've said that there's an infinite replayability to this. So, so how does that factor in? Yeah, so there's four player co op because you're playing with your friends, and what we all want to do is make sure that it's different every time you're playing it. And so we have a lot of different systems. They were like, oh, that yeah, they're doing that normally, right? The AI driver. The AI totally driver forgot about that. Everything that's happening in the game with items, 
where they're placed, what's happening with the creatures, what's happening oh. with your health kits, your perks, all of those systems are driven off of that. I mean, so the gunplay looks kind of fun. Morning, not only do you have those, hey, this last time we played this, there was nothing here, and this time we're being overwhelmed. Yeah. And then you also have those peaks and valleys so that you have some downtime and then you have some really big uptime in it. Yeah, it or, feels you know, very much happen. like Left 4 Dead Alien-esque. So and and we are getting a well. lot of Left 4 Dead right games as of recently. And then if you don't find them at first, we'll, we'll spawn a couple more later. But if you're really good, if you're really killing it, well, we might not put anything on the main path. And so if you want to go find your perks, if you want to go find new weapons... I think because of the enemies are moving the relatively jank, harder, but in a way more interesting they way don't do say, anything for hey, me. Let's double the health of all the enemies. Right. Right. Like in Back 4 Blood, which is also coming out soon, well. is really so giving me this feeling of unease when I see the enemies. When I see those enemies swarming the player, I'm just like, okay. You've got to be here because you don't know what happened before or after, but here, we have these really big peaks and valleys so we can bring you to nothing for a little bit and then have it go crazy. I love that it's it's scaling to to your basically your your skill level, right? Exactly. So so that yeah, that's fantastic. Now, kind of deeper dive more into the perk system that you're going to have in the game. So for the perks, we looked at a lot of games where you start with, um, let's say, a class-based thing, and then you know if you're playing with your same friends, well, I'm going to be support, you're going to be carry, someone else will be how like we we kind of get into a rut of what systems we're playing and how we're playing. And so we want to be able to mix that up so that every time you're playing, you're also kind of choosing your role based on the perks you're getting. So perks come in this thing called the Mata Compiler, and you have to go find the Mata Compilers in the world, and once yep. you find one... This is unfortunately one of the games, which is and then over time, you're not doing it for me. Building a deck for your, for That's your unfortunate. Character. And so you might have it where, if you saw in the trailer, there's a pulse, which is kind of like a, a melee shove. Well, you can invest into that, and you can have one that you can now recharge your pulse faster, and now it protects your, uh, other players around you. And then it gets more powerful, and you can actually do damage with it. So all of a oh, Minecraft is a new exp a expansion, oh, a new update coming out, a big one, the cave the update, right? That is coming out soon. You'll get a bunch of perks that are about um, investing in one weapon and making it where when you do headshots, it actually does damage to other aliens around. So now you're the sniper hanging back. I'm actually so surprised that Microsoft hasn't mentioned that. And you'll earn these perks as you play. So the more you play, the more perks you have. But since we want the game to they haven't, they haven't great to play with your mentioned friends, Minecraft a single time. You've been playing, you know, say you've just realizing you've that. Hours. You're brand new. Wow. Well, we share the perks. So you get all the perks that I have available to me as well. So that way you yeah. get to have that experience of all that craziness right. in your game as well. Because it's all about having fun with your friends. Right. The shared experience with your friends. Now... We kind of already talked I mean, they had the the Minecraft the Earth Day like or something they're calling they this, the right? That That's of, always happening well, in. Let's talk more about the enemies in the game. What what was October? some of the inspirations for that? So the enemies um, is we kind something of like that. Of how we want the players to behave. But still, it is like one of the biggest Xbox games. I think it is the biggest. Like it is the game that makes Xbox so much money. So it's a bit surprising that they don't have mentioned it at all at the E3. Like not even a new trailer or a scissor reel or anything. And you know what it's doing. It's spawning things. It spawns these little turrets that come at you. They're not the worst thing. That is kind of surprising. They're going to be unrelenting until you kill the spawner. Huh. And so you'll be sticking with your team and you'll be like, oh, wait a minute. If the spawner comes now and why? turrets come and we've got a guy down, we've got to go over there. I'm not sticking with my team. I'm going to go hunt that thing down. I'm going to go kill it. So you go run off. You kill it. You're feeling good about it. And all of a sudden you realize, wait, where are my teammates? I'm all alone. There's other specials here. Oh, I'm in trouble. And it's trying to create those kind of moments where it's mixing it up, where you always want to have it where it kind of almost takes turns of one player's the last one surviving. They're oh, the Cave and Mountain update had already happened. So I thought it actually really is still coming. Enemies give you those okay. For how it, it yeah, I'm not, I'm not really super deep in Bonus Minecraft. Question for you. What does the anacrusis actually mean? So anacrusis is a musical term. It means the, the notes before the song, the little, the little kind of intro. And for this, we have a character, Boris, that you never meet. <laughs> um, and then okay. apparently we'll just talk about it, because I thought it was fun to have this character that you never really are sure who they are, because it's everyone else describing it. And she um, named the barge that you're on, that you're launching these missions, the anacrusis. And her thought there was, this is not the main event. Yeah, there's something about this game which with fighter pilots doesn't click people. with me graphical-wise. This is finding out about these aliens and what just happened. 
Oh, that, that sounds so cool. Again, the Anna Cruz, the, everything that you talked about today, it sounds amazing. I can't wait to get my hands on it. But Chet, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. We've got so much more coming in today's show, including Obsidian Entertainment with Grounded, Eye Illusions yeah, and Let It Roll grounded. with Shredders, and 343 Industries with a deeper dive on that incredible multiplayer trailer for Halo Infinite. But first, the original Stalker was one of the most intense oh, and eerie games of we get some Stalker year, deep dive? For Stalker oh, hell yeah. And Zach Hit me. from GSC Game World has a closer look at the game. Let's check it out. Yes, please. More, I mean, I don't need more Stalker. Game World. But it has been several days since the gameplay reveal of Stalker 2. Our I take game it. now has a subtitle Heart of Chernobyl and a release date of April 28, 2022. By the way, the pre orders are open for both PC and Xbox. You're obviously of they are. here willing to learn more, so here are several that details so about good. Stalker 2 Heart of Chernobyl you probably <sighs> didn't know yet. So let's dive a little bit deeper in our trailer. Oh, the they don't show the new gameplay. On the chemical plant. <laughs> That's unfortunate. You can see the actual in-game animations of picking up the weapons and installing modifications on the go. I saw that. That was pretty cool. And then you were not using it. You can notice the teaser of a new faction. We are not showing the exact moment right now because we wonder if you can discover it yourself. You may actually recognize the exact location on the swamps. If you played Stalker Clear Sky, you may remember this place. The time nope. did the job, but the tower is definitely still there. Ah. Also, in this scene, you can see a brand new detector Skiff is using for the artifact hunt. Because of its swarm, it's called Gilka, which actually means a branch in the Ukrainian. Oh, okay. The artifact Skiff is going to collect is called Jelly. In game, it recovers your stamina. Moving mm -hmm. to the dancing man scene. Before you ask it, yes, there will be a lot of characters with an interesting fate in the zone. The one thing I noticed. His hideout is located in Chernobyl. Look at the boards. That's a town not so far from Prepa. When he is moving over the, the ground, like the wooden boards on the ground. It's such a small and fine detail that the boards are actually moving. I just realized that when I watched it a second time. <sighs> the campfires. A small isle of safety in the unwelcoming zone. A place where you can finally have a little rest before another foray. You okay. have seen the campfire during the first uh, shoot, trailer Rekko. in the shoot. Rookie village. Of course, it wasn't the only one. Ugh. The zone is full of dangers and mutants. Mm -hmm. The monsters are the result of the numerous experiments. I remember this one. We're not ready to show you all of them, so let's stick to the old good bloodsucker for now. Yeah, they were already horrible in the first one. So a lot of people theorize that this is the character from the first game. Зона дала мне жизнь, новую жизнь, жизнь, которую я готов вернуть, если But this looked so good, like all the facial facial animations. Я буду защищать ее всегда. In this rooftop scene, we are truly proud with the quality of the animations. It was really good. We made a small behind-the-scenes video from our motion capture studio. The face photogrammetry process makes the final result as close to the reality as possible. <laughs> Man, I'm really thinking about playing this maybe in, uh, in the original language, but... Mm. It's tough to watch for people then. Uh, do you know how inviting friends to Anna works? Uh, not from the top of my head. Moving to the final thing for today, the man at the end of the trailer is Sergei Grigorovich, the creator of the Stalker series. Oh. Cool. Thanks I didn't catch that. Today. 
We can't wait for the moment Snake. when the time No, not from the top of my head. If I would probably see the interface, then maybe. But not from the top of my head. Sorry. As you just saw, Stalker 2 is shaping up to be something special, and I can't wait. It's kind of crazy when you think about it because Stalker 2 started out with this. On day one. Well, was on first Sunday, in development, the trailer, then got cancelled, then the studio the basically scene, shut down, then they basically came back with it. Like, there was so much shit original, going on behind the scene with this game, too. it is remarkable to what it actually shapes up. Where is he? Oh. This is the first one. Yeah, if you haven't played this game, A Plague's Tale, you should. We've done a full playthrough of it, and it was actually really good. It was actually uh, one of my top games of 2018. 18 or 19. It was really good. Especially, like, the acting of the kids. When you when you uh, know that also the kids never saw the game, like the kids were not allowed by European standards to see this because it was an M-rated game, and they just had to act from what they got told, and they did such a good job, man. Ah, the A O E four. Give me that sweet empires. The king is back. And here to tell us more about Age of Empires 4 are Adam Icegreen and Emma Bridal from World's Edge. Thank you both for being Hi. here. Thanks for having, having us on, Paris. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> my, my legacy, age player, I'm excited for this. Now, <sighs> Let's do this. We had some news at the briefing. Mm -hmm. Can you kind of talk about that a little more? Well, I mean, fans got to have their first looks at two more of our launch civilizations, um, the Abbasid Dynasty and the French. Yes. Um, and they bring a lot yes. to the table, um, totally different ways to play. But I'm really excited to show them those. And then also, people got to see their first taste of naval gameplay, uh, which we haven't mm -hmm. shown off at all, except for a little teaser at the end of Fan Preview. Paying off that tease. And exactly. we also revealed one more of our campaigns, The Hundred Years' War, and uh, Joan of Arc made an appearance. Uh, we also announced that the game is coming October 28th, and it's coming to Windows Store, Steam, and, of course, Game Pass for PC. Now, earlier you mentioned the two civilizations, the Abbasid Dynasty and the French. Can you kind of go I could say something here, but that? I will not. Um, yeah, I guess I'll start. Um, the Abbasid. So the Abbasid Dynasty is this amazing technological powerhouse of a civilization that um, has a really unique mechanic that we're bringing to uh, them in Age of Empires IV. It's actually unique uh, across all the civs that are in the game in that they, they construct this bastion of knowledge called the House of Wisdom, and they can keep upgrading oh. it with different wings, and that gives them a host of incredible technologies that leverage their army, <laughs> their economy, their resources. Uh, um, sacred site. Man, money. that's so uh, rebellion, uh, and a rebellion uh, relic. Again, relic loves to have their, their points on the map, camels, which you have to amazing, capture and to uh, hold. The other units in their in armies, every so game, so relic is doing as a strategy work. game. There is a flag somewhere you have to hold camels for the different kinds of buffs and advantages you can give uh, to your to your civilization it's great it's such a relic and thing the French are really really strong with trade they've got some great options that are gonna make your late game really really mm -hmm. interesting they have a landmark called the house of commerce and for your units you're gonna really want to focus on knights and lances those are your powerhouses but the French actually made an ap appearance in the trailer uh, as part of the hundred yes. years war campaign and uh, as you can see Joan there I'm actually wearing her around my neck she's a feminist icon from history this young woman who led with her convictions and led a battle and she was a teenager and so she's beloved she's in age two in a campaign and so we know age fans are going to love seeing her again and the hundred years war yeah. with the multiple missions, like the battle of the 30 are really going to bring that period of history to life and all the live action that campaign in age two on Sunday, that's all from within the game we have these multiple documentaries that will the play end of it the missions to story tell and really bring it to life as you journey through the hundred that, that was the first got you moment in the video game for me uh, telling a story mm -hmm. in matter of fact i don't think i've seen any game that no. does what we're doing yeah. in terms of wow. how we're showing the story and how we're getting people involved yeah. with history so it really exciting. really brings it to life and and 
I've learned things about English history from these documentaries I didn't learn in school. So yeah. they're educating as, as well as moving the game forward. I mean, that's now, true. I probably learned more from uh, history in, any game in Age of Empires than I ever learned at now, grade school. How have you taken some of that feedback into development for Age 4? So we formed a community council back in 2017. We wanted our community and our players to have a seat at the table for development. We're making the game for them. So they've been hands-on with the game for a really long time and giving us their honest feedback. And we then take that to the game team and they look at making changes based on what they've told us. So they've influenced things from the look of the UI icons, the influence system that's built into age four. They really, really helped us with their view influence to make system. the game better. Oh God, um, I'm getting really flashbacks of Stronghold 2. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, Ooh. Actually, you know, if you look at a lot of the data, let's hope not. All the Age of I know it's not the same thing, but and Naval is one oh, of that's cool. That this is our first Combat look, actually, at Naval crazy, Combat. Right? But if it wasn't there, people would miss it so much. And and sometimes we have to ask those hard questions when we're making games, right? We say like, huh. do, we, do we need to do this? And it was something that we we felt weird about, and we went to the council with it, and we're like, hey, that's interesting. You know, not so you actually have now so aiming like do we need it and they're like yeah no we see your point but you know you have to have this yeah. and it was great it was a great reaffirmation um and we throw a lot of things like that at our council to make sure that we're making the game i i think naval is needed not everyone needs and wants naval I and get that. Towards yeah. I understand that. Council, people are going to get hands on for the first time. So we I had love a Naval. Preview event back in April. So. And we looked at the feedback from that and have made changes since then. So, you know, you let us know that you didn't feel like the weapon scaling was quite right. So mm -hmm. we've gone ahead and we've improved that. That is fantastic. Now, you actually hit on something that I wanted to jump into mm -hmm. because Age has been around for a while. <laughs> There's been previous games, but you continue to make content for those. So mm -hmm. what's some of the news you can share as far as development with some of the legacy Age games? Uh, well, we have a new expansion coming in August for Age 2 Definitive Edition called Dawn of the Dukes. And in mm -hmm. that expansion, we're going to be adding two more civilizations, the Bohemians and the Poles, and three new campaigns for the Lithuanians, the Bohemians, and the Poles. And those are great, great stories about a really cool, like, uh, brother and brother, brother and sister teams that work together to kind of rise up these empires, and I can't wait for people to get a hand, their hands on it. And the great thing is, is that if you pre-order Age of Empires 4, um, you get that for free. That's part of oh. the deal for pre-ordering Age 4 on, on the different platforms. Well, that's neat. And um, for H3, of course, because we don't want to leave them out either. Yeah. Um, H3 Definitive Edition, we're hard at work on an African PDLC with new civilizations. And oh, we knew about that. And I can't wait to uh, to show more, but we're not ready to, to talk about that one just yet. But if you don't want to miss out, go to ageofempires.com, become an insider. You get a little sneak peeks at things we've got coming and chances to get hands-on with content early. Yeah. Now, and those chances are under NDA, NDA. Mm -hmm. so even if I would have already played Age of Empires 4 for quite well, some time and absolutely love day. it, so um, I would not yeah, be allowed to tell you that because I signed an NDA. We're not going to show them just yet, that'll come closer to launch, mm -hmm. but our two remaining civilizations are the Holy Roman Empire and the Rus. And uh, the names of our two remaining campaigns are the Rise of Moscow and the Mongol Empire. All that sounds yeah. fantastic, please. No, no, I was just going to say I'm so excited. I can get all gushing about <laughs> things like this. Um, we're gonna, you're going to have to wait a little more to, to get information and see more detail on those civilizations and campaigns, but um, we've also got, you know, a ton of stuff planned. We have a beta that's going to be coming up. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, you can go to ageofempires.com yeah. to sign up for be an insider to get in our beta and get a chance to actually get hands-on with the game. Mm -hmm. And then of course, if you had then, played it and happy with it, I would be envious. Yeah, but you don't have to be envious because, you know, I I would not tell you about it. We're just really excited. <laughs> that, that, that is great. And I'm sure age fans all around the world are really looking forward to that. So again, Adam, Emma, thank you so much for thank being here. Thanks for having us on. No, thank you. Massive battles across land, air and sea have been a hallmark of the Battlefield series from the beginning. Oh! In this next video, design director Daniel Berlin will tell us more about what oh, dice can do we are getting a, brings all out warfare. Maybe we are finally getting some shooting. Console. Like we had literally just three seconds of shooting from the character we played in those trailers. It's like fascinating. The thing that will really excite players is the introduction of all this cutting edge technology that would just infuse really his name is Berlin into the sandbox. Huh. I think just having the comeback of the helicopter That's the city I'm living in. on the battlefield 
that just introduces a whole new layer to the sandbox. It just gives players so much more tools that makes it more battlefield than it's been in a very long time. So we really enable our players to be really, really creative with the tools we give them. And that's what Battlefield is, is, is kind of all about. Being in a massive, open... You give the players the tools, and, being able to and then you just over there, go solve it. And let, the let them think, do things. How they want to solve that you played the Battlefield 4 with Knight yesterday? How was it? Process, create your own battlefield moment. It was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry that I has. experienced three really distinct experiences. Um, the one we're talking about right now, we're talking about today, is the experience that we call the all-out warfare experience. Now, that was a terrible. The place you go in 2042 when you want to have those classic battlefield experiences, this massive war. Where it's yeah, Battlefield 14 is sea, like, oof, F4, 14. Now, made a distinction between two separate experiences within Four. the All Out Warfare uh, experience, and that's Conquest, which is a very much a staple for our franchise. It's something that our fans know and love. And also, we're just taking you were on the purple place. This time around. Conquest is all about um, the freedom, how the access you? to the sandbox, being able to choose where you fight, how you fight, where you want to go. But it's also experience that um, will allow players to kind of choose their own pacing. And there's moments in Conquest where it's complete chaos. When a lot of players, just, just, they just converge on a single point and the chaos goes... This looks still massive. crazy. But there's also moments within Conquest where, you know, you've just had... I'm not platform battle, loyal. And now you won that battle. And you go like, Thankfully. okay, you bring up your map and you have a conversation with your friends. And you say like, okay, where do we want to go next? Oh. We need to go over there to that state. Okay, how do we get there? Oh, let's call in a vehicle. And a vehicle, you can <laughs> call it in wherever Let's you call in Uber. Hop into the transport vehicle and you go across the map. And you go to I mean, in 2042, so Uber is probably delivering is tanks and Humvees and, and right maybe even jets. Is, um, the other experience you know? within all that warfare, which is breakthrough. And this is a significantly more guided experience. It takes you um, on a journey throughout the entire map. And in Breakthrough, there's an attacker and there's an, a defender team. Um, and we kind of... I love that this time... Into fighting head on in a they're just having two base. modes. The, the time to action is short. And the level in, of is really, in the main really mode. But then they have like different modes. So they're going a little bit the route of Star Wars Battlefront. So all the second one. Takes these and that's good. Fan I know people are like, oh, this stuff is better for the, the, the game modes they really had in those games were really, really strength. good. And that's on the Xbox Series X and the Xbox Series S, you will actually be able to play uh, all the warfare experiences up to 128 players, which is a double to what we've done in the past in the franchise. And this is really, you know, you can have those moments when you're playing 2042, when you're sitting in the helicopter and you look down and you just see this, you know, sea of tanks, soldiers, infantry, helicopters, fighter jets just moving in unison. And you kind of get this feeling that you're part of something bigger, like a really, really massive army. Yeah, look, I have played Battlefield and if there's one thing... Really they have never done since really 1942 well, is having players way, moving in unison uh, because it wasn't just a simple <laughs> ass, um, you know just making it bigger and then portion the, the locations out it doesn't really work that way so we've leaned into a new type of design mentality that we're calling clustering now with clustering oh. means that you will have a massive battlefield in front of you yes but within this massive battlefield you will have particular clusters of objectives so the map Hourglass is set in Doha, Qatar, and it is, um, I'm not going to go into any specifics about exactly how large it is, um, but it is definitely one of the larger uh, maps that we will have in 2042. It's one of my favorite maps personally, because it has some really, really cool distinct <laughs> It's one of my personal Down maps, south, because I have actually map designed map this. A, uh, fully destructible uh, village. And this is a great space for infantry and vehicles alike because you know as a battlefield player that infantry is skulking around inside the buildings but you know when you're in your tank or your attack helicopter you can just you know can destroy those buildings and get access to the infantry and you can go further oh east and you'll find a bunch of high rises skyscrapers and so there's a whole section there where you can enter the skyscrapers you can go up to the top of them you can zip line between the roofs have fights in between the rooftops but if you want to change it up even more, you can basically skydive off of the skyscrapers 
and which is fantastic. A particular specialist that has access to a wingsuit, you can actually glide across the entire map space and get yourself all the way over to the stadium, which is on the east side of the map. And uh, the stadium itself, it's a place that you go when you really want to just take out your shotgun and have some close quarters combat. Ha! Ah, so, the that moment was brutal. Building larger maps, but creating locations within that map where there's a particular type of gameplay. And with the Conquest game mode, for example, you will also... I'm actually looking forward to that because I'm more the, the boots on the ground guy and CQC. You actually have to capture it's definitely my thing in Battlefield games or urban to urban to battlefield. I'm not, I'm not a fan for so, uh, open areas. <sighs> Other people can have their fun with that. As well. There's a massive wall of sand moving across the entire gameplay space. So Have you seen the reaction of, course, it of the player the storm itself, who has actually pulled the, the um, what is it called, the Zuka, the the Zuka trick? In a different mood, in a different light, and it changes the visibility for the player. And this is a really good time for you to lean into our plus system where you have the capability... Like he was going crazy when you saw it. On your weapon. I'd also like to mention though that the wall of sand is one thing, right? But there's also the possibility of the tornado. Man, that thing looks still... Oof. The tornado is this massive disruptor that just comes into the play space and it, wherever it goes, destruction follows. It's a massive, uh, moving, physical entity that will pick you up, throw you across the map, pull helicopters into it. Um, it's just a crazy, fun physics experience that happens. I really wonder how this will do. The of the player. This really is a sandbox. And <laughs> sandbox, get it? A lot of sand. Sandbox. <laughs> in our game, it, they just happen, and they happen differently every single time because it's players controlling Sorry. what's happening around. Yeah, I'm really so curious how the people will pick it up. Like, if people will actually like this, or if people will actually absolutely hate the guts out of the weather effects. Epic action at an epic scale is what we all want from Battlefield 2042, and DICE looks poised to deliver. During the showcase on Sunday, we announce an exciting collaboration between Rare, Xbox, and Disney. Yeah. With Sea of Thieves, a pirate's life, yeah. a free update, which brings- I think this was the thing which just- sailing into the Sea of Thieves. Surprised Today, so many a brand streamers. New showing some of the gameplay you'll experience when you team up like, with Jack Sparrow for this all new adventure. I think every every reaction video I watched was the same well, thing they were like wait what like some people took a long time to pick up on this because the music and then some others took as long as I basically did and they were like what Now we have awoken, and we are hungry. Oh my! Tentacles! Oh my god, can you imagine? Somebody said it as a joke. But can you imagine the next collaboration? Is Monkey Island? That would be amazing. Davy Jones wishes you destroyed, and I shall oblige him. What is that? That would be so amazing. I think. Who has the rights now to Monkey Island? Destroyed our statue, and there'll be the double to pay. Enough of this. Hear me, my daughter. Come forth and. Oh my. Oh my. Is it still Whatever Disney? I've told you, it's not true. Unless it's flattering, in which case, it's all true, but they left out the best bits. Savvy? Man, 
Joni, executive producer on Sea of Thieves here. So <laughs> wow, tentacles! It's kind of interesting that night is coming in the so moment we are starting to see tentacles. You want to tell me something? And 8 p.m. in Europe, we have the Sea of Thieves: A Pirate's Life Showcase. So this is a real deep dive just into all of the details behind this collaboration with Disney. How did we bring Jack Sparrow into our world? How did we capture his humor and his charm and all of the? And how much money we have actually paid Disney to make this happen? Stay tuned. We're going to get some behind-the-scenes interviews with our development team and also just to chat with us, with Disney, just about how this collaboration came to be. So it's going to be amazing. I hope everybody tunes in. So we'll see you on Sunday. Captured in real time and 4K. We have seen this trailer before. I really have to go back to Slide Flight Simulator. I really, really have to. Like, they unleashed, like, tons of new free updates where they completely updated, like, some of the areas and started to handcraft them. Like, Japan, UK, right? Like, they had, like, multiple ones where they really just did go in and do, like, all the handcrafting stuff for free. And, man, and they lowered the download um, size of this game. Like, before that, it was, like, what, 100 gigabyte? Now it's only, like, 50. Uh, they actually lowered the size of the game quite significantly. Which is good. Ah, Venice. They got Lucas Arts. Yeah, right. I thought that Monkey Island is. I first thought that maybe that's Tim Schafer who has the rights to it. No? Okay. <laughs> Fun fact, um, Knight. Sekro was actually talking about that just a few minutes ago. Like. Like. It was, it was rough. Apparently she needed some extra therapy sessions now. So whatever you did, good job, you broke her. Oh yeah, they also announced this one. I remember. What? Ron Gilbert actually go to. I know you came back to Double Fine for some time and then left again. We just played Battlefield 4. Again, if I'm lend you some of my moderators, you have to bring them back in good condition. We'll get to that in just like, a second. Be at least that polite. I'm joking. I'm joking. We're blown away by the stunning visuals and the depth of simulation. Joining us is Jorg Newman, the head of Microsoft Flight Simulator. Jorg, thank you for being here. Really appreciate it. Good to meet you. Those are cool glasses. <laughs> oh, you made Timberweed Park, right. Yeah, as well. So you have some announcements this Sunday about Microsoft Flight Simulator. Can you go into that a little bit? Yeah, it was super cool. We I think it was a right. Flight Simulator is coming to, I think uh, Timberweed Xbox Park Series was right. X and S. And the franchise has an awesome history on the PC. It's going back all the way to 1982. You know, it predates Office and Windows. And uh, when we launched last year, it was on the PC only. And it was a really warm welcome from simmers and from press and from people who have never flown flights in before. Yeah. So we're super excited. That it <laughs> well, you can also play it on PC. Um, so folks, I would take a super quick bio break. I really so have to go to a toilet, I'm but I'm also not missing anything here because we have played this game a quite a bit to the Xbox on the PC. S what sorcery Back in a minute. are you doing to get this running on both of those consoles? I have to know. I think it's a combination of two things, really. My, first off, it's a super powerful console. Yes. And then we are really using the t Microsoft tech stack in an interesting way. So as you know, Series X and S is like a beast. The, 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 the GPU is awesome, super powerful CPU with multiple cores, uh, RAM, fast RAM, and uh, we can run in 4K. That's super important for planes. Because yeah. you sit there in the cockpit, you need to be able to read all the text. SSD, fast yeah. internet. So it's basically the equivalent of a really powerful high-end PC. And on top of that, on FlightSim, we're using the Microsoft stack a lot. Like we have 2.5 petabyte of data 
It's 1.6 million CDs yeah. uh, sitting on Azure. And um, we're basically streaming that down as you go. And uh, we also do machine learning algorithms up there. And that is how we build procedurally in runtime 1.5 billion houses and 2 trillion trees. So it's a combination of those two things. Super powerful console, super good use of the Microsoft tech stack. You get it to work on console. That is fantastic. Now, with Xbox Game Pass and with it coming to console, you're going to expose Flight Simulator to a, whole, a lot of new gamers, right? So what are some of the things that you're going to do to make it more accessible to a wider audience? So we had, to, you're exactly right. We had a little bit of that last year when mm -hmm. we launched because we knew the Flight Simulator, that's their hobby, they came in, they know everything about aviation, they know exactly what to do, but we had a lot of people come in through Xbox Game Pass on PC and basically tried for the first time. So we. Even on the PC launch, we did a bunch of work on onboarding with tutorials. We gave some assistances. But now for this Xbox version, we're actually doing a ton more. Mm -hmm. and I actually brought you a little video. Yeah. Um, and, and so there's five things we did. The first thing, if you're becoming a pilot, the first thing you do is you do a discovery flight. It's basically, you know, you have, your, you have a flight instructor next to you. He does most Hi. of the work, he or she. And you get to steer the plane and feel you know, good about yourself, yeah. right? And and so we said we need to recreate that. So uh, like two, two pla ten I will probably Earth, move like my streaming session to the like toilet. Mount Everest, or Rio de Janeiro, or New York. It's so the cold there. And we basically put you on a plane. It's ready to go. It's beautiful like weather. Like my bathroom is like. Is fly and have fun, and it's it's it really is an onboarding experience. is super good. And then we noticed on the PC side that people are really love to explore the world in flight sim. I did that. I've, I've spent like a month in South America, and I've never been to South America, yeah. and it was super cool. Um, but it was only visuals, and um, you know, so you didn't quite understand how everything fits together. So now yeah. we added labels, and Bing oh, has neat. all these labels basically for every for every POI like famous place or river or mountain. So we have all those now, and we put that into the world map. That's and cool. Even if you go down and you try to plan out your flight, you can now see all the cities around you. And it totally transforms the experience. Same in, in game. So we now have labels in game where you see, you know, here's Everett. Over there is, you know, whatever. The, and you learn about the, the planet more. And it's, it's a much more enriching experience just, just That's experiencing cool. the planet. No, oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The next thing we did um, is the, we, we re ramped the tutorials. We wanted to basically smoothen out the, the, the onboarding experience. We wanted to retain knowledge more. So we had eight tutorials on the PC. Now we have 22. Oh, wow. And Damn. Yes, they're shorter, they're much more focused, and we have a performance, um, a performance indicator system. So basically, it rates you and how you did. And you get a score. Also, I see and German. I can speak for myself. Like, I'm totally motivated to get better and better and better. I mean, his last name is German. More and, more and he sounds like, like a German fly. accent so a bit. It's been super successful, and I think it's going to help newcomers a lot. Like the shorter. The feature that we have is it's called Fly Future. Which I use a lot. Yes, uh, uh, yes it's, it's slight German it's accent. And you see. And yes, I noticed that because it is my accent. But you, you know, it's like, eventually yeah. you go to Brooklyn Bridge. So on the yeah. flight instructor, you can now, uh, flight assistance, you can now click on, go to Brooklyn Bridge, and the AI. He's definitely like using English you, will fly for a long to time. The Bridge, and you can just look around and have an interesting time. Same with airports, which are sometimes challenging for people like we can click on the airport and say please land me at say Newark airport and then the last thing is if you really get yourself in trouble like you stall out the plane or something like that you can actually now click into <laughs> uh, you can now go and, and basically say recover and it's almost like the pilot is sitting next to you it's super helpful I think people will love that's it. cool and the last thing was um, you know we learned that people are everybody's good taking off but some people are hesitant to land specifically yes. when you look at like big international airports and they seem scary and you need to I love land, landing in this game and all that super technical so we added a new feature called land anywhere just land let them land anywhere and then oh. um, when you do that the first thing you see is 71% of the planet is water yes so we added basically floats to a bunch of our planes and oh that's cool everywhere now on the ocean or in rivers or wherever huh. same with snow so we have skis on ski on, on our planes now. Oh, that's so cool. You can go to the polar regions, mountaintops, or when it's winter, that's lent an A320. Uh, you can now land anywhere. So I think those in the ocean combination will really make it easier for people who've never been uh. in flight sim because it's, you know, we 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 as we made a decision not to dumb down the flight sim. It's not easier. It's not gamified. Right. Like we made we gave you assist we gave assistances to help you learn how And to even if it is easier, plane. let the people choose easier choices. It doesn't so really like infect one thing affect on PC anyone. Is there's a ton of flight accessories that you can use as far as various peripherals and controls. Oh yeah, this is interesting. What are you going to be able to bring 
to the console that can somewhat replicate that experience. A lot of people ask for yeah, this. It's a good news story. Uh, so there's two really good flight sticks already on the console. It's the Thrustmaster T Flight Hotas One. If you have that, and then there's also the Hoti Hotas flight stick. Yep. And so we fully Hoti Hotas. And then we work with all the main top notch peripheral makers, both on PC and Xbox. And I can all I can say is there are going to be some really good announcements coming up. Yeah. And okay. for Core Simmer, I can cool. say you can now play. We have the software to, to have a full Core Sim experience, and we'll have the hardware on Xbox. All for the first time on a console. It's going to be great. Oh, that's going to be great. Now, good. We, we obviously had the funny start with, with the Top Gun Maverick expansion pack. You announced that. But can you go into a little more detail about that? Yeah. Oh, yes, please. Expect? We couldn't be more excited, right? Like, yeah. I mean, it's, it's really like a dream come yeah. true. If you think about entertainment and the franchises that celebrate aviation, now, you talk will about actually come to Microsoft. You will be Simulator able to and, play and it. Top Gun. And the, the, it's a perfect yeah. marriage. So, um, I can't say that much about it because the movie obviously is, you know, keeps everything under wraps. Yeah. But if you look, if you watch the trailer carefully, you saw there's some F-18s, and there's an aircraft carrier. There might be another plane. Yeah, and there was I definitely another we're plane. Go fast, like really fast, yeah. and we're going to be in the danger zone with that this is, one. That is going to be great. Really looking forward danger to that. Zone. Now we wrap this up. There's not much else you can say about the Maverick expansion pack, but what else can people expect from Flight Simulator in the near future? A lot. So um, ever since launch, we said we're going to I mean, that game is super successful. Update, like, like even Microsoft admitted that they didn't really launch, saw like the amount of people who uh, would play so this and how how many copies they would sell. Earth, like the but States, that thing Japan, made them like money. The island, and we make that really better. Like we get the latest, the best possible satellite imagery. We, we create an elevation map that basically makes the mountains look better. We, we make we create 3D cities. Like after launch, we launched London and Paris, and and we also make missions. So we celebrate the planet like with these updates. And we're just going to go around the planet. We're, we're we're shipping two more this year and six more next year. And then we also have something called sim updates, simulation updates, where we work with the manufacturers of planes, with the flight sim community out there that knows tons about everything, <laughs> and, uh, and also with, uh, with, with real world pilots. And we're, we're basically making the sim better and better. The goal is to make the ultimate sim. Yeah. It's the perfect thing of totally authentic. And then on top of that, you should expect the unexpected. Like with, just like with Maverick, which I don't think people hmm. really got, saw coming, there will be- A lot of people said they wanted to see some uh, helicopters at some gamers. point. And the simmers both their hearts pounding. So keep watching the skies. That is awesome. They were they were like Again, talking about I'm that so if at some point helicopters would come to, play flight to a Microsoft simulator. Flight Simulator. I've been it on PC. I love it. I highly recommend everyone do the flight from LA to Paris. It's really good, very cathartic. But <laughs> as we get out of here, I want to thank you so much for taking I really have to go back to this simulator. game. This is also like a summer game. Back. Thank you so much. It was right, not you. necessarily thank on stream, but maybe on stream. We have grounded shredders and of course halo infinite but first one of the best pc games of 2020 was hades and it's got oh, a ton yeah. of awards to prove it here's a closer look at what we can expect from super giant games later this year on xbox series <sighs> here's X the thing S. it's the same thing you have been playing we just announced that hades our game of the year winning roguelike dungeon crawler is coming soon to xbox this video contains spoilers and I to introduce you to some of the gods ghosts and monsters you'll meet in our rendition of the ancient greek underworld you don't need any prior interest in Greek myth to get into Hades, but as you play, maybe you'll get to wondering how much of this stuff comes from mythology. The answer is, a whole lot. Greek myth is filled with wild, fascinating, often contradictory stories of these... Oh, yeah. The Olympians are a big, complicated family, always bickering and always pushing It took each other them and their and a long time to unify a little bit of the stuff. Let's start with Hades himself. What is it now? of a mountain of infernal parchment work. He's often relegated to the role of villain in many modern adaptations of Greek myth, but in classical mythology, he's a complicated guy and much yep. more principled than some of his brothers or sisters. He's so fascinating, we made a whole game about him. As the god of the dead, Hades has an imposing reputation to live up to, so he even has a monstrous pet in the three-headed hound of hell, Cerberus. The idea that this no. savage beast was still somebody's pet dog crystallized how we wanted to portray the gods in Hades, that despite being immortal and all-powerful, they're not so different from the rest of us. Though, let's not forget Zagreus. We've heard from many players who figured Zagreus was a god of our own creation. After all, who's mm. ever heard of Hades having any kids? But according to some ancient sources... No. Greetings, father. 
There, there has been actually some rumors that Zagreus was a, like a, a thing which existed. He wasn't mentioned too often though. Meaning a god of the underworld, sometimes associated with Dionysus, the god of wine. But in other cases, he is associated with Hades. Mm -hmm. How could Hades have a son nobody knows about? How does he fit into the myths we do know of Hades? We were so drawn to answering these questions that they form the basis for the entire story of this game. If you're the prince of the underworld, who do you get as your personal trainer? That would be Achilles, a near invincible warrior in his day, once called the greatest of the Greeks. It's good to see you, lad. Despite the circumstances, remember your training out there. The pain of death is but another obstacle. I got the voice acting. Demise during the Trojan War. Once he's had a lot of time to reflect on his life choices. Oh. glory, so he's got an okay gig in the afterlife. But some wretched souls end up in a really bad spot in the underworld, and for better or worse, they get to meet Megara. Ever stubborn, aren't you? Maybe my whip might make you reconsider whatever it is that you're attempting here. She is one of the three Fury sisters tasked with torturing some of the absolute worst souls for all eternity. And in our game, she's also tasked with making sure Zagreus doesn't make it out of the underworld. These two have a lot of history. Such a good game. The story of keeps moving forward each time you play. The more you run into Megara, the better you'll get to know her. There's they have 100 hours into that game. He may decide to drop in on you when he isn't busy whisking the souls of the recently departed to the underworld. Thought you could just get away from me, did you? He is the personification of death, according to Greek myth. I still believe that those two are dating. Peaceful death, just saying. Say, the kind that happened a lot during something like the Trojan War. So even though he can seem a little sinister at first, in the spirit of the mythology, we wanted our Thanatos to have a gentler side. Thanatos has a couple of brothers in Hades, such as Hypnos here, the personification yeah. of sleep. If this was great. Paul says here one of the wretched thugs got you too bad. When he's not dozing on the job, Hypnos can comment on every single possible way you can die in this game. Of the dozens and dozens of different possibilities. One of the best games last year. And one of my of best games of all time. According to the Theogony, like an ancient that game. creation myth by Hesiod <sighs> that introduces all the gods and their ancestors, many of the Chthonic gods came from Nyx, the personification of night. Yep. Darkness guides you, child. And Nyx came from chaos. Of that I am now certain. Should you return again here, I shall keep you safe. She is a primordial goddess, meaning she is much older even than Hades or the Olympians. Yes. And in our game, she has an important role in the underworld, not the least of which is helping you unlock some of your hidden power. There are 30 different characters to meet and grow closer to the more you play Hades, and we hope you enjoy getting to know them all. Some of them oh my. are ancient and godlike. Some are funny, some are scary. We found them incredibly inspiring and hope you do too. Once you get to meet everybody, when Hades comes to Xbox One and Series Hermes X, is a August real bro, 13th. man. Hermes is such an interesting character in this. Because he's basically playing both sides. I have a feeling this is a Game Pass trailer? Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is a Game Pass trailer. By the way, folks, tomorrow we have a sponsored segment for Game Pass and uh, Dungeons and Dragons Dark Alliance. Yes. After more in the morning. We are having an early look at the game before it comes out next week. I think it's next week if I'm not completely wrong. <laughs> I have to check my, my list again with all the with all the important informations I have to remember for tomorrow. <laughs> I'm looking so forward to Atomic Art. I'm I'm hoping that finally it's coming out next year or something like that. Man, we have been waiting for so long for Atomic Art. It's like, oh come on man. Oh 
Hobo Quest. That looks kind of interesting, not gonna lie. I haven't seen that before. Yeah, 2018. That's three years ago. Medieval Dynasty. <clears throat> yep, Dungeon and Dragon Stack Alliance. Oh yeah, I'm actually looking forward to that. Should be should be a lot of fun. Oh yeah, that is also going on right now. I have that on my list. Go big. I have to mention that multiple times. <laughs> Here to tell us more about the Grounded Update are Adam and Eric from Obsidian Entertainment. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having us. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, it's a real honor. No, absolutely. Love Grounded, love everything that you guys have been doing with it. Now, my first question is, this mushroom system. What can you tell me about that? Yeah, so that's one of the big things. <laughs> that's a really good day. system, uh, man. Really how the, the, uh, like, the no, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't get it. How good the system is we are using with the mushrooms, really cool. man. So, the small ones, the big ones, the big code schools, the ones that you find. It in would caves. change your now, world. Those were present in the yard before, but now you can actually harvest them um, <laughs> and get mushroom uh, stuff out of them. Um, the next kind of Oh, uh, mushroom part of walls? that is that uh, we're adding a couple base building elements uh, like mushroom bricks. Yeah. So you have to take all those mushrooms that you find. Damn. And then you have to grind them up in a grinder, which is a new building. And then you have to take them to your oven, which is another new building that we're adding. And so it's like uh, bake the, the mushroom uh, stuff into bricks. And then uh, with the mushroom brick buildings, there's Damn. a whole host of new options for base builders. Um, and it's more fortified walls. Um, and a bunch of other options so you can build a cool big castle. That looks so good. Oh, really cool. I really have to now, also go back to this game at some point. Oh, the point. Into grounded. I have only played this when the game that came that out in early access. Of the game as we move forward. Yeah, so uh, the Broodmother is our first boss. Yeah. Um, that, so we, we actually launched with the Broodmother um, and we didn't really feel it hit the right mark. So we took the Broodmother out and we wanted to spend a lot of time making it a really memorable boss fight. So. We put a lot of development effort in behind the Broodmother, and it's going to really feel like a big, huge fight and a memorable one. Um, there's a lot of kind of cool things with it. I don't want to spoil everything. Yeah, right. I want players to kind of experience That's it enough. Themselves. Thanks. But uh, it definitely can is move on. Uh, something that we want players' feedback uh, to see, like, what do they like? What do they not like? How is the challenge? We want to make it really challenging um, and have a good reward for defeating the Broodmother. I hate spiders but already. Is it too hard? Uh, we'd like to know that. So... Uh, for future development on Grounded, like, we want to make more bosses, and so we want to get all that feedback to improve I wonder how long, like, early access of Grounded is running. Like, we first heard that it would take about a year, and now it seems like we would not even release this year. So, I wonder how long. I would definitely say that you would need to make sure you have the highest tier armor, and gear up really well for this fight, because it, it is going to be difficult. And then uh, you also want to have the right mutations equipped as well. Uh, and uh, if you're playing with your friends, uh, it might be good to. I, for one of your as I said, I haven't played this game since early access release. Like it was like fun, it was good, but it wasn't. Else, like, face tanks the, the it wasn't yeah. so it's too cool. much there. Cool. So again, going back to the community, I, I know you love getting feedback about Grounded. Obviously, starting as an early access game, but. Um, what are some of Sitting. the things that you're looking for as far as in this, this update? And what was something that you got feedback wise from the community that you put in this update? Sitting. Yeah, so there's, there's, you know, it's one thing that we love working with community. So that's, that's something that we, as developers, we love just hearing what people have to yeah. say about the game. And we're continually developing. I'm so glad that this is also um, not so scripted. Like the questions are scripted, in our, in our but not update. the answers. Um, one of those things is, uh, flipping buildings um and that's one thing that we're really like uh just adding like those little features uh, another one is just sprinting up ladders. they probably rehearsed this that, like, don't get me wrong you know, just hearing people how they interact with ladders and as, adding a as it is mode. usual the other one is one of our uh funnier features that we're cool. adding is sitting in chairs yeah <laughs> so it's something yeah. that, that yeah. a lot of people yeah. really really wanted um 
And we're also interested in like the first phase of t pets in the game. So we're going to start with yeah. aphids. So you'll be able to tame an aphid, oh, run around the yard with the aphid. But you also got to make sure you protect your aphid because yeah. accidents can happen yeah. in the backyard. <laughs> oh, there's one other thing too. Big accidents. So we're really excited to, to announce that we yeah, have finally. achievements in Grounded. And that's, that's purely based on everyone's feedback. Everyone's been wanting achievements. Yeah. Mm. So we're finally adding them to the game. Mm. That's really good. Now, again, sticking with this, uh, the, the topic of community. So this was an early access game. And it sounds like pretty much the foundation of what Grounded is was built off of community feedback. So how does that process work internally for you as far as people submitting like, hey, I, I, I want to sit, you know, I want achievement <laughs> bets. Like, how does that whole process work? So we have a lot of like avenues where we gather feedback from the community. So we have we do weekly developer streams where mm -hmm. chat can ask a bunch of questions when we have Adam on or other developers or myself. Uh, and we'll get gather feedback and sessions there. And then our main source of feedback is through our official Discord, uh, Grounded the Game. And uh, I use a more and more developers are using Discord a of from the as a resource from for there, feedback. Uh, me, Adam, uh, a couple members of the team, like and from, also from the community team. A get together. lot more. And we have a weekly meeting going over all the suggestions and kind of prioritizing what will work and what we can, what we can put later in the future for like other suggestions. Excellent. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for taking some time to come talk to me about this new update for Grounded. It looks like a lot of fun. I'm going to get to sit, I guess, right yep. now, so that's great. <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. It's almost time for a closer look at the multiplayer trailer for Halo Infinite. But first, and we already have done that. to see what the snow, the slopes, and the powder spray look like when powered by Xbox Series X and S. This is Shredder's. Hey there and welcome to the stream where you'll get an extra glimpse on our snowboard game that's called Shredders. I'm Dirk van Welden, project lead at Foam Punch. Amazing name. This is Marcus Boschmo, tech lead on Shredders and Foam Punch. Yeah, you've probably seen our trailer at the Xbox event. Uh, we've been tinkering on this game for a while now and while it's still in development, we're happy to show you more of this game. So I'm switching to our developer drone cam. I can actually spawn wherever I want, like instantly. But I first want to show you some of the areas uh, we've been working on. Uh, this I mean, it looks neat. It's called Frozen Wood. It's inspired by some of the resorts in the French Alps, where I've been snowboarding a lot. It has these cozy parks, side kickers, half pipes, really big rails, a lot of features in there, way more than you would expect. In Makes me actually want to resort. snowboard again. But hey, this is a video game and we want <sighs> as many features as possible. So yeah, like I said, this is completely open and you can go snowboarding anywhere you'd like. You can do some missions, there's like a story evolving around the main character that wants to participate. Unfortunately, in thanks to global warming, they're the using more and more fake we snow. We can also just cruise around and find some nice lines and where you can flow. Like for example here, in this pillow-like environment so that was shown in the trailer. Or you can go up there, like take some huge kickers and big rails at the big park. And just look how big this mountain range is, like we've got space for Damn. industrial areas and street areas, there's backcountry, high mountain riding, there's even an old Italian looking village you can shred. A lot of these locations have been inspired by events happening all over the world and snowboarding movies that inspired us these past years. It's kind of a tribute to, in fact. Also, anywhere you go, you can always ride during golden hour due to our real-time lighting engine. But hey, having a fun and realistic environment is nice, cool. but it's not I wonder if you can actually... The itself, right? Oh, that poppin' yeah. though. So for the um, I'm actually kind of curious if you can snowboard at night. All, I think it's been pro riders, snowboard movies, and all the crazy stuff that they do on a snowboard. And of course, ourselves riding in real life and just having fun and being creative on a snowboard it, that's something that we yeah, might have done snowboarding quite a bit in the past but i've never done the crazy one moves stick for the board and one stick for the body and directly map that onto the snowboard like a little bit jumping here and there but nothing like super over the top crazy it gives you a lot of freedom in your playstyle, so you can choose to be smooth but fast, or if you are more like which fast then explains the broken ankle on my feet. Kept fluid and stylish, yep. being very reactive. So th that's a big challenge, and we had to create a complete animation system dedicated. Let me tell you, 
And here you can see the a broken angle. Over the snow. He put some weight. That fucking hurts. And he really digs in those <laughs> edges into the snow for a clean car. That's that's not that's, that's not a the board stick pretty thing. To speed check to line up for a feature, but you can also use most of the sticks combined for even greater control. Yeah, like you, here you can see him balancing on the tail of the board. This is called buttering. I think stance, I still have somewhere the uh, in normal the, the scans. System, we're trying to give as much control as possible to I think I have somewhere still the scans from the broken ankle. I have to find that. I have to find that. Every grab you can do, you can also tweak it out with the board stick. So, so for a really big spin, you have to get the timing down in the takeoff. And while you're in there, you keep your body tight, so you keep spinning at the like it's never, it's never a good sign when even the doctor who is getting like the scans and is looking at it in front of you is basically just like, oh boy. Oh boy. Like the face he made that day. Oh. It was like, oh boy, here we go. Like now I can laugh about it. Because it completely healed up. Like I can I can make fun about it now, you know. Hey penguin. Um But yeah, it didn't it didn't look pretty at Thankfully it wasn't an open an open um uh, broken bone or anything. Ooh. <laughs> The, the face really my doctor made was like and I have to fix that shit great that grappling hook is like mm. best scene I'm actually really curious about uh, Halo, the multiplayer. I have, I've played, I think, Halo multiplayer one or two back in the day. I'm not, I'm not quite sure. Sure. And when I say played, I mean two hours. Like playing is not really the right term I would use for what I did. You know. Now, show me what you can do. That is also interesting. They look use the grenade to like throw the sword into his direction. That is such a smart thing to do. And reminds me again that I would never do that because I'm bad at those games. I'm so excited to have Tom, Alex, and Quinn from 343 Industries. Gentlemen, thank you for being here. Thanks for having us. Now, Damn, that's a beard. I've watched this multiplayer trailer numerous times, and I want to see some specific moments from it so we can break it down. So can we roll the trailer to 15 seconds in, and let's talk about a new character. A new day is upon us. A new generation built to fight. Really? You couldn't have just jumped to that Never. scene? Now, who is this character? She looks like she's in charge. Uh, your, your, your senses are right there. She's very much in charge. That's Commander Lorette. She's in charge of the Spartan Academy, which is the kind of contextual wrapper that the whole multiplayer universe lives in. She is basically training the new generation of Spartans to you know, become better. And that's really where everything wraps around. Um, I really love this character. And then what's cool is... And also the amount of hard hair game, gel we have a whole he has to use or hair it. wax. Well, there's a tutorial that teaches the basics of the game. There's weapon drills that let you practice with every weapon that Damn. You and get, improve your skills with those. And then there's a whole thing we call training mode, which lets you play against bots um, on any map, basically, in the game and lets you experiment with the toys and kind of learn the flows of everything. So we really want to bring players on board with the game and... Again, so that be under it, her man. orders and her charge. Now, 
I want to go to 50 seconds in the trailer because there was a lot of action going on and I want to check that out. Kind of interesting that he didn't die there. So it seems to be a very, very slow kill rate. In Halo, which I like. Yeah, that shield sending in the bag was kind of interesting. Now, you may have noticed I sat up in my chair a little bit on that <laughs> one because there was a lot going on there. So please, if you can break that down, let me know what we were seeing. Well, there's a lot lots of, of people running. Slow motion that. shots. But the, some of the, the, the which were both really our pre-sale numbers. That, that first sequence with the player, they have the bulldog shotgun, uh, the shotgunning enemies. They grab the, the commando off the off the rack, put some shots in, low sensor, like there's all sorts of different things that the player is interacting with, and that's the sandbox. That's what we call the sandbox. The toys that is at the disposal. For the <laughs> we shoot the sticky off my leg. And we just really love that, that moment. Sometimes the, the leg has to go, man. The grapple shot, they look up, grapple the ceiling, and then in midair, no scope snipe an enemy, come all the way down, back whack a foe, and and then the rest is history as you just see what happened in that trailer. But that's just some of the stuff that that players can do and that's actually the game that's not just a, a movie for cinematic experience like that is the game that if players are good enough put in time they can actually do the things that you see in that trailer yeah and few things are more important to halo multiplayer than like interacting with the sandbox and combining it picking it up off the map and combining it into awesome play styles so um, what we did was um, every uh, sandbox item in the game when it spawns, it's spawning on an object in the map, so you can see where those things can be found. And then it also tells you the respawn time of that item, when it's gonna come back. And you always know, I can go grab that commando over at this uh, spot like that, that guy did. So, and then when the players you know, accrue all those awesome items and do awesome things, you, know, you heard the return of uh, Jeff Steitzer, the multiplayer announcer, uh, shouting out medals. So we always wanna give players medals when Yay. they do really cool things. So you heard some there, and you'll hear some later on in the trailer. That's awesome. See, when I watch that, to me, that's Halo. That's Halo to me. I absolutely love that. Now, let's skip ahead a little bit more into the trailer to 57 seconds. <laughs> I heard a voice, so I want to know what this voice is. Let's let's see it. Hello. Let's it's a private damage. AI or well, special yeah, so AI, players, personal, uh, AI. personal AI. Yeah. Um, that was the so one I was looking Halo for. 5, they, there was a squad leader that uh, announced, you know, when weapons are going to come up. And other things going it's kind of weird because they have technically have the already player, broke uh, down Cortana, the multiplayer uh, a uh, trailer helmet, uh, that is kind of telling them these things uh, with another video another way that players can um, show their personality on their in their characters so there's multiple personalities and characters for the uh, so player it's kind of weird that they are doing uh, it so that they, again the right AI is right. in their helmet uh, helping them out in combat I want to skip ahead a little further here because I think I might have saw a big team battle so so let's go to a minute 40 and, and check that out Well, actually, it was just a lot of like grappling hook action. But Blame the enemy flag. Return it to base. There's <laughs> so much going on. Call of Duty, but with vehicles. At your I'm joking. That looked like big team battle to me. <laughs> what, what, what's coming new? What are we going to do in big team battle in Infinite? I mean, it's not even just that. I mean, part it actually opens with actually a 4v4 with a vehicles map called Behemoth in the, at the beginning. So we, we actually are bringing vehicles back into the 4v4 arena. But then, yes, it definitely transitions into the 4v or the 12v12 actually BTB part of the game where we're actually making it a bigger team battle this time. Really wanting to index into the battle fantasy with the more players. Where instead of like vehicles just spawning around the map, we have pelicans drop them off. We have ordnance pods that drop in new weapons. And inside of that whole time, you have the battle commander, Lorette, talking in your ear, 
giving you orders and trying to kind of encourage you to play around, but really just bringing the whole sandbox and the play style around this whole battle experience that we're building. Yeah, Tom brings up some good points there of of uh, Commander Lorette and this. You've you've got your commander on the. Comms, I'm listening, by the way. I've I've seen this trailer multiple times. Vehicles and items off. You got drop pods, everything. It just is like this this theater of war. That this time around, it, it's is this 12 v 12 bigger team battle, if you will. And just that last, that, that ending segment, which is like a capture the flag match, is just so beautiful and awesome where you've got the Pelican drop the Banshee off, teams fight over it, you're, you're, you and your teammate are just making a beeline for the Banshee, your teammate gets picked off by the sniper, and you're like, oh no, and then you get the skewer, take that sniper out, jump into the Banshee, and you hit the jets and fly up into the sky and go for the enemy flag. That is, that to us is uh, what is so exciting about this version of Big Team Battle with all of the toys, all the vehicles, the modes coming back, the maps, the brand new maps that you see there. I mean, it's it's going to be an amazing experience. Yeah, uh, trust me. I yeah, it's weird. They have basically talked about this before in the uh, I want to go to two bigger trailer in the trailer because I, I think I saw a samurai. So let, let's check that out. Let's go to 208 in the trailer. Okay, so I guess next would be a ninja because that was definitely a samurai. So kind of talk about that. So we're going to start seeing some more customization with the armor coming in. Yeah, infinite. I mean, that is a samurai Spartan armor. Yeah. And so it'll be an, a, an armor you'll be able to unlock for free in the first season, which is super cool. Players will be able to equip it, you know, gain more armor pieces and customization options for it, et cetera, across the season. And then we actually have more of this stuff kind of coming down the line. Where there's actually some really cool ideas that we're seeing in uh, that our team that's building that stuff. So there'll be a lot of other cool armors besides just the really core halo spartan armors there'll be some other different kind of twists and things for players to play with awesome look now before we get out of here first of all i want to thank all of you for being here to to talk about halo infinite i'm excited i can't wait to get my hands on it and play it but before we do leave is there anything else that you want to bring up and let fans out there know about well, I'm excited for people to actually get their hands on it, like yourself. So, I mean, if people sign up, on I the assume that a lot of people are. We have in the summer, we have a uh, a, a technical preview that we're going to be launching, and so people to finally get yes. put their hands on the sticks. And I'm just really excited for players to actually finally get to play the game we're working on. Yes, yeah, very much. On day, Halo Infinite multiplayer is free to play, which is new to the franchise. The team is super excited uh, to hopefully bring in, you know, all sorts of fans that have potentially never experienced the franchise or haven't played it in a long time to just try it out, come in and, and try it out with your friends. Me, with my buddies, if I have some friends out yeah. there that haven't played Halo before, I'm like, well, it's free, just, just come on, let's let jump in, download it, let's, let's check it out. And if it's for you, it's for you. If it's not, then hey, it's not, but I kind of think it'll be for you, so I'm excited for it. Yeah, that's the, the other big key of that point is uh, PC, right? Like this is, this is a, a PC game as well. We've been putting a lot of effort into that. So not only is it gonna be console but also pc if free to play like the barrier to entry is so low and that has i mean the free to play stuff is like i think as we really just to, crazy. to really think about it is we've been working on this game and as developers when you work on a game you want to get that game out there and that almost seems like for us that's the finish line but in reality it's going to be the starting line for for all of us for us and the halo fans day one there's going to be a bunch of content there and things that are exciting and good but then we're going to cool. add more content. We're going to add more maps. We're going to add more modes and weapons and vehicles, equipment items. And it's just the beginning of this whole journey that, that we've been on for a while. And we're going to take everyone else with us as, we, uh, as the game comes out. I'm excited. Gentlemen, again, thank you so much. Now, for fans who want to learn even more about Halo Infinite multiplayer, check out the brand new deep dive video with the whole multiplayer team over on halowaypoint.com. Yeah, I'm cool with that. And allow me to give a big thanks to everyone who's joined us today. Whether you play your favorite games on Xbox... So they're just selling Game Pass? Game Pass. Wait, what? The next 12 months will be nothing short of spectacular. It has been my I mean, honor. you don't need Game Pass for Halo Multiplayer because Halo Multiplayer know, is free to play. play. deep dive from the team behind the highly anticipated Scarlet Nexus. I...
Paris, I wouldn't necessarily call it highly anticipated, and that you were ending on Scarlet Neck. Whatever. The world is expressing the world. The world is expressing the world. And the visual of the visual of Scarlet Nexus is the visual of the visual. It's, it's one of those weird games where Microsoft really tries to sell you this. We are an anime company too! Ooh, ooh, ooh. Right? That's basically what they are trying to do here. And it's kind of funny because the game is also coming out on PlayStation and PC at the same time, and there's no real like. Xbox is getting this first. It's, it's really Xbox was looking for oh damn we have to push the narrative a little bit more that we are actually like anime it's like okay it is bad enough to get an anime as well. Ah, look, everything gets an anime today on Netflix. Because Netflix just realized how much money they can make with that. その東京タワーがものすごく大きなサイズになっていて、これあの3000メートルの富士山と同じぐらいサイズがあるんですけど、それだけ大きなものあの本当はそのサイズない330、330メートルのあの東京タワー。特に not saying I'm not interested for this game or I don't give a damn。That's not what I'm saying。そのさっき東京の都市をいろいろと混ぜるみたいな話をしたと思うんですけれど、it might be kind of curious game. We might check it out. I mean, it's a game pass, so... Is it? Wait, Scarlet Nexus is on game pass, right? Is it on game pass? で、大きな桜の木というのは日本を代表するあの桜の木なんですけど、それがあまりにも大きなサイズ。I think this was one of the big selling points and why they are selling this like so much is because it is a game pass, right? It's kind of tough nowadays that you're like this is a game pass, right? It isn't? Oh. Hmm. Okay. Like, you're, you're expecting it now so much. Like, Xbox did an amazing work here to basically put people into the thinking of this is a game pass, right? Not the creature design. で、そのアーティストの表現というのは、その美しさがありながらも、その死の世界とか、そのネガティブなイメージとポジティブなイメージを一つにしたような、あの、あの、あの、人間のようでいて人間と違うような動きをするだとか、そんなモーションを取り込んでます。なのでモーションを作るときには人間っぽい部分だけはモーションキャプチャーを使ってるんですけど、そうでない部分は手付けなどにしてその人間の動き
そしてもう一人がこちらのカサネランドールですね、はい、彼女はですね非常に優れた超能力を持っているもうエリートと呼ばれるキャラクターですね彼女はスカウトして入隊して非常に優秀なキャラクターそうスピーク OK 左側がですねこの重ねの視点ですねで右側がユイトの視点でのイベントシーンになっていきますが今重ねの視点でご覧いただいた通りちょっとユイトの姿が見えたりとかしていますで今重ねの方ですね一緒に同行しているキャラクターこのキャラクターが実は未来予知の能力を持っているキャラクターでちょっとこのあユイトたちがやられそうだなっていうのはちょっと分かるようなシーンになっています、まあ、この頃あのユイトの方は今止めてますけどこれはユイトの方では入らずに次のシーンに進んでいきますっていう形で進んでいくと、えーまあ、こういうふうに貝が降ってきてあ同じようなこう状況に置かれてしまう、まあ、ユイトの方ではこういうふうになってるんだなっていうのは分からずに進んでいきますが重ねの方ではあやっぱりそうなったかっていう形でこう物語が進行していきます、まあ、こういうふうにこう同じ一つのシーンでもですねそれぞれがこう、まあ、つながりを持って感じられる。Okay, so it's very much like, um, から今こう発売まで出るところでもうほぼ4年以上かかってるんですけれどもこのストーリーラインというところももちろん企画の最初からこう作っていわれてるんですけど、えー、非常にこの多くの時間を要して I have one particular problem with this The game really has to captivate me so that I'm playing those games twice And if it isn't done doing that, then. Ooh. Yeah, it's interesting. But how many chapters do we have here? いろんなキャラクターがいろんな能力を使って戦う集団というものが大好きで、まあ、そういうそのいろんな能力を使う集団を改めてそのゲーム化したいという思いで企画を立ち上げました。あとそのサイキックアクションのもう一つの主軸としてあの SAS というものがありますあの正式名称はストラグルアームズシステムというんですけどその、probably... まあ、Yeah, I, I haven't watched the Band and Nemco showcase So I don't know what they really showed there If this is maybe the same thing they have already showed there Because it wouldn't surprise me 今画面上ではあの放電の超能力を今使おうとしているんですけどまあ放電の超能力だけに限らずまあ瞬間移動とか透明化とかまあポピュラーで誰しもがその一度は使ってみたいっていう超能力を選定してます。Yeah. あの can... 本作のそのキーワードとして赤い線っていうものがあるんですけど、あのサスを使った時にその赤いケーブルが背中に刺さる。Oh, like、戦うことができます。のそうですね。あのサスケーブルデザインするときにそのまあそうですね。見た人のその印象に残ってインパクトに残したいところはまずあったんですよね。でそういう時見たときにあの。Okay, she definitely seems to be the more in depth character or harder character. Like the other dude feels like the hey, let me just let me just use my weapon here, let me just use my sword. She's definitely using more tricks. This is the one thing I really applaud Nintendo for every time. That they actually have translators for this. And some really good ones. Not gonna lie, it makes it kind of tough to follow what the person is talking about and what is happening right now on the screen. はい、あのプレイヤーはですね、あのーまあ、このようにあのブレインフィールドっていうね、その特別な必殺技を使うことができます。これはですね、あの
海抜群が使うことができる近畿の技で非常に強力なんですけど、同時に非常に危険な技でもあります。It's a prohibited one, and this is why they're using. Okay. Let's see. Let's go. で加えてですねあのこの残り時間の秒数があるんですけどこれが制限時間が過ぎるとあのゲームオーバーになってしまうっていう非常に危険な技になっております。Oh. はい。So you can basically lose. うまく使いこなして戦う自分が勝つっていうのをプレイヤーに感じ取ってもらいたいなと思っております。あとそのブレインフィールドあの発動したらフードをかぶってそのたくさんケーブルが刺さった異様な姿になるかなと思うんですけど。これもそのまあダークヒーローっぽいかっこよさがそのまあすごく危険な超能力を自分が扱って戦ってるってところを感じる。So when the timer runs out and you were still in there, you're dead. はい。あのこちらの。Oh, character progression. と呼ばれるシステムになりますね。あのこちらはあのまあプレイヤーが成長するスキル。Interesting. あのこのようにそのちょっとその脳みその形をデザインしたツリーを意識して作ってます。でそのまあ今。So weird when developers talk about that. Like, yeah, when I designed it to look like the brain when I made this tree, I was totally aware of it. Oh, okay. ほじょスキルとか、あのまあさまざまないくつかのカテゴリーのスキルを習得することができるようになっています。で、そのまあ脳みそをその脳神経を拡張していくようなあのデザインにこだわってて、そのまあスキルを選択してボタンをホールドす